so uh, I, I'm a, a, a member of, uh, it's, it's not in the title, but I'm a member of the JEDI project that uh, some of you may have heard of. This is at uh, JCSDA, the Joint Center for Satellite Data Assimilation housed within UCAR Community Programs. Uh, and so this is work that uh, a number of the JEDI core team has contributed to. And th this is a uh, Singularity containers on uh, on HPC machines, uh, as I'll discuss. Uh, two of the machines that we chose were the Discover system at the NASA Center for uh, uh, Climate Sciences. I think that's what NCCS is, uh, and the uh, Space Science and Engineering Center at the University of Wisconsin. The S4 machine there. And on both machines, we, we were really the first to uh, run a significant, substantial application across nodes uh, in a singularity container. So the system administrators for both sites were very uh, interested in helping us out. And so Scott Nolan and Jesse uh, Stroik from SSCC and, and Kenny and Nick from NCCS have uh, contributed a lot to this uh, effort as well. So I'll, I'll give a, I'll start by giving a little outline of what what JEDI is and why we use containers and then I'll talk about uh, our application of, of containers to HPC systems, how we make them, how we use them, and some benchmarking that we've done. And for the purposes of this talk, just a simple definition of a container. I think this audience is uh, I, I pretty much knows what a container is, but it's a it, it's an encapsulated user environment or a packaged up user environment that can be unpacked across different systems, uh, from laptops to cloud to HPC. So the Joint Center for Satellite Data Assimilation, as I said, it's housed in uh, UCAR Community Programs, uh, we, but we have uh, uh, many partners, uh, different divisions of NOAA, uh, NESDIS, uh, uh, OAR, uh, NWS. Uh, the uh, NASA GMAO and the Air Force and the Navy are all uh, JCSDA partners. We also work with a number of other institutions, including NCAR and the UK Met Office. And so it, it's a multi-agency uh, uh, research center uh, dedicated to, uh, to improving the use of, of satellite data and all observational data, really, for the prediction of uh, of weather, the ocean, and and climate. So what JEDI is is a is a unified data assimilation system. So the idea is it sits between the observations and the models. So uh, right now, there on the left, there's a list of uh, a incomplete list of models that have been interfaced to JEDI, including uh, FE3, the GFS, and the GEOS uh, varieties, uh, MPAS, Elfric, SOCA, is an ocean model from JCSDA. We also have uh, a variety of toy models, a Lorenz 95 one-dimensional model, uh, a QG model, and a shallow water model to use for uh, in investigating different DA al algorithms. Uh, Neptune is also uh, interfaced into JEDI. We had a talk on Neptune on Monday. Uh, and the idea is that once you develop, when, once you interface your model with JEDI, then you uh, instantly have access to all these uh, different observations. We have radio sons, radiance aircraft, aerosols, GNSSRO, uh, sea ice for ocean models, and a number of different observations. So, and then on the other hand, if you uh, I, I come up with a new uh, new satellite or observational instrument and interface it with JEDI, put in an observational operator, then you instantly can can uh, assimilate data into all these different models. So it's a, it's a unified data assimilation system. The, one of the motivations was to reduce duplication of effort among all of our partners. So basically anybody in the US government who's involved in weather prediction is a partner and, uh, and to sort of test out new uh, observational systems, new observational operators, new uh, DA algorithms. This is, uh, it, it's a test bed, but it's also uh, operational caliber uh, uh, performance is, is the idea. And so you can use the same, and it's, uh, you can use the same DA algorithms for uh, atmosphere, ocean, coupled models, toy models, promoting R2O and O2R. And so the, the design is 
uh, uh, to exploit. All this is achieved through object-oriented and, and generic programming. That the top-level stuff is all C++, and we make heavy use of templates to uh, to provide generic interfaces to, uh, to to different models and different uh, observation operators. And uh, uh, we employ modern uh, uh, software practices, separation of con concerns, agile software development. Uh, so I mentioned that high level stuff is C++, a lot of the low level Fortran code uh, and all, all the observations are all handled in, in C++ too, but a lot of the, for, a lot of the uh, low level model code is in Fortran. And the announcement is the first, so right now Jedi, Jedi just began about, uh, about two and a half years ago uh, or three years ago. And we are uh, preparing for our first public release this month. So uh, the, the code is on GitHub, it's currently private, but October 28th, uh, we're, we're going public with it, with our first first version. So, so this is uh, exciting. Uh, so some of the software dependencies of, of JEDI, uh, of course we need compilers, uh, MPI. Uh, it's a CMake build system. Uh, and it uses some uh, ECMWF uh, tools like EC Build, EC Kit, FC Kit. Uh, we have we need linear algebra libraries like uh, LAPAC and Eigen. Uh, various NetCDF tools. Uh, we use we use Boost, but we only use the headers of Boost, so we don't we don't have to install all the all the various libraries on every every system we use. Um, and then and then various other things the. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Python tools, uh, parallel I/O is needed for the MPAS interface. So uh, the idea is, and so so those are the the dependencies of Jedi, but and uh, the uses of Jedi are are vast. There's, uh, as, as I said, it, it's going to be. It's not quite there yet, but the idea is to uh, eventually uh, have equal exceed the performance of operational weather forecasting systems. So uh, we, we plan to, to use this for operational weather forecasting. Uh, universities can use it for research. Uh, uh, again, forecasting at private companies. Uh, we've run it on the cloud. And, and as I said, uh, it can be also be used for training. We have uh, uh, these toy models. And so if you have graduate students learning data assimilation or uh, researchers uh, uh, experimenting with new algorithms. Uh, you might run Jedi on your on your PC or your or your laptop. So uh, so it's uh, portability is a challenge. One way we address that is we do uh, 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 maintain environment mo von modules on a variety of HPC systems, including Cheyenne and Hera and Orion at NOAA and Discover at uh, at NASA and the S4 system at SSEC, uh, but you know we only have so many person hours. We can't uh, maintain environment uh, modules on every system where people uh, use Jedi. So, uh, so we have this uh, Jedi stack build system where you it's a public repository on GitHub. It's just a series of build scripts where you can build all the Jedi dependencies, so you can build your own environment modules. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Amazon machine images, uh, AMIs on, on Amazon for, uh, and uh, we can make them public. I think they're private right now, but, but there's no reason we can't make those public for, for Jedi users to anybody with an Amazon account can, uh, can fire this up and be ready to run Jedi. Uh, but for other applications, we find containers very useful. So, so this containerizes all of the Jedi dependencies uh, we've used different uh, container providers. We create regularly Docker containers, Singularity containers, Charlie Cloud containers. Uh, the uh, Docker containers we use uh, mainly for CI testing. Uh, Singularity is used for uh, uh, Jedi development and to run on different systems from laptops to HPC. The reason we um, generate Charlie Cloud containers is because Charlie Cloud uh, Singularity, you need root privileges to install. So if you're on an HPC system that doesn't have Singularity, then you can't use the uh, the Jedi uh, 
uh, container, but you can install uh, on many systems, not all. Uh, you, you can install Charlie Cloud in your own uh, in your own home uh, user space. So you can uh, install Charlie Cloud on your own and pull the uh, pull the Jedi container. Uh, the, this is <coughs> excuse me. Uh, some systems like like Hera have uh, disabled uh, uh, Noah's Hera has disabled user namespaces, so it's not possible there. But the benefits of containers are, are portability. You should be able, ideally, to to run it anywhere, wherever wherever Singularity or Docker is is uh, is installed. You should be able to run it. Uh, and reproducibility. If you're using the same version of the Jedi code and the same, you can tag it with a version control. And if you're using the same version of the container, you should be able to reproduce and, uh, and running on the same data, you should be able to reproduce the same results. And you can uh, specify what exactly you want to bring, bring in your environment, what dependencies and what versions of each software you have. So uh, uh, to minimize stack related debugging. And it's helpful for, for workflow. You can use a container to develop on, on laptops and, and, and then use the same container to run on an HPC system or, or the cloud. And it, it's also a we use the containers for tutorials. We run uh, two, well, before COVID, we ran uh, two academies a year. And it's a good way to get used, new users up and running quickly with, with Jedi without having to worry about installing all the dependencies. So this is our build system. It starts with these build scripts, Jedi Stack. And so we use Jedi Stack to make environment modules directly on the cloud and HPC systems. But we also use those same build scripts to, uh, to make Docker images. <coughs> and the Docker containers we make, uh, we use directly for continuous integration testing. And then we use from the Docker images, we create these uh, uh, Charlie Cloud and Singularity containers as well. And again, these containers can be tagged so you uh, with versions so you know exactly what's in them. Uh, so the container types we use, most of the ones so far that we've developed uh, are uh, and, and distributed our development containers. This contains the compilers and dependencies but it doesn't have the Jedi code itself. And this is useful for uh, continuous integration and also development. A lot of uh, Jedi developers, uh, you know, you can make changes to the code and, uh, and, and then push it to GitHub. Uh, so uh, so that's, that's handy. And application containers contain, uh, do not contain the compilers. Instead, they only contain the runtime dependencies and the compiled Jedi bundles. So uh, Jedi uh, is organized, the code is organized into bundles depending on what um, model you run. For example, there's an FE3 bundle or an MPAS bundle or an LFRIC bundle. And so each container can be bundled up with a certain, uh, a certain model. Uh, some containers may include more than one model. And uh, so it doesn't com include the compilers, and so this is this is used for for Jedi releases. So when we hey, when we do have uh, public releases, we can uh, distribute application containers that have the compiled code and optimized code within them, and even um, and the Intel development containers we can't make public for proprietary reasons because they have the compilers in them, but the application containers you can you you can you can have the uh, you can compile do a multi-stage container, compile the code with Intel, and then just exclude the compilers from the container and, and distribute it publicly. So, and then uh, we also have tutorial containers, which are kind of combinations of, of the, the previous two. It does have the compilers in them. It does have the code itself. And they are, uh, and it also has input files, uh, input data files, so that you can run the uh, activities and uh, uh, these are writable, so you can change the code inside them, the change the source code. So these are useful for training. So currently, our current containers, uh, we uh, define the containers by the combination of compiler and MPI. So we have GNU Open MPI, Clang MPitch, and Intel 19 containers that we maintain now. Uh, the development containers, 
the uh, public containers we distribute uh, on Docker Hub in the Scilabs cloud, the Singularity site. Uh, the Charlie Cloud, uh, this is, so D, S, and C here represent the Docker Singularity and Charlie Cloud containers. The Charlie Cloud containers we make available publicly on AWS, just with, uh, you can get them with a wget command. Uh, the Intel development container is privately sitting on AWS, so you need a, a, a JCSD account to be able to get that one. But the application container that I'll be talking about, the Intel application container, so currently it's private on AWS just because it has the Jedi code in it and the Jedi code is not public yet. But as soon as uh, we have our public release, we'll make that public and similar for the tutorial container. So uh, super containers are uh, application containers that are designed to be used across multiple nodes on HPC systems. So we've, uh, I, if you've heard any talk on HPC containers, you know that Docker is not um, very useful on HPC systems because of the security issues. So the platform we've chosen for that, these is Singularity. We focused on Intel. Uh, for uh, performance reasons, and these are multi-stage builds, so they do not have the compilers, just the runtime libraries. We've um, focused on FV3. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, currently, uh, and what makes them super containers is they have enhanced components, so so that you can install uh, Mellanox or or Inbox OFED uh, drivers, uh, PMI, UCX. Uh, and its components, KNM and XPMEM, to uh, interact with uh, with the hardware on the system, whatever it may be, because the container has to talk to the uh, to the host system. And these are built with uh, the HPC Container Maker. This is a public repository uh, on GitHub provided by NVIDIA, and it's a, a, a Python script. I, I hi highly recommend it, very useful. It's Python scripts, and the best thing about it is it's not a black box. It, uh, you, uh, it, it generates Docker files or Singularity recipe files for you, so you can see exactly what it's doing. But it has, uh, there are Python scripts with building blocks, so you can tell it, you know, you wanna install Mellanox OFED version X, and it will go out and grab the source code uh, and, uh, and you, know, you know, put the relevant Docker commands into the Docker file. So very useful. So we execute our, uh, uh, these containers using what's called the, uh, Singularity calls it the hybrid mode. Uh, others call it um, outside in, but I, I like calling it a multi-container mode because um, each MPI task launches its own container. So you can see that MPI exec is called from outside the container. Uh, and so this is uh, this takes advantage of the configurations and optimizations and and pro process schedulers on the native system, so you don't have to you know from within the the container it is possible to run MPI from within the container, but if you want to do it across nodes, you have to find some way to communicate with the other nodes, and it's it's not easy to do. So this this is. Uh, both the easiest and the most efficient because it makes use of the native uh, uh, MPI uh, implementation. So each MPI task launches its own container, but in order to get this to work, the MPI inside and outside the container must be compatible. In our case, in both cases, it was Intel. Uh, <coughs> and this, uh, this third bullet is what took a, a, a while to get this to work is uh, you, you must take measures to avoid conflicts between the hosting container environment. So there's this, uh, anybody who's used Singularity, when you run the development containers on a single node, you often run in Singularity shell or Singularity exec commands with a minus E option, which cleans the environment and isolates the container environment. But when you do this hybrid mode with MPI, you can't do that because uh, the MPI inside and outside the container talk to each other in part through environment variables. So, uh, so that that's that's the key is minimizing these conflicts. And the way the way we did that, uh, this is a uh, part of a Lua module file. Uh, you and this what 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 you see here is. Uh, 
uh, and setting environment variables. So the environment variables prepended by singularity ENV sets things within the container. And, uh, and so, so you, you, these, these set the environment, environment variables within the container to point to the libraries inside the container. I'm just gonna speed up a bit because I'm running a little uh, short on time. And then this is a Slurm batch script. You load the native MPI module, you load this uh, uh, module uh, to uh, resolve host container conflicts in terms of environment variables. Using MPI exec was important instead of MPI run. That This made a big difference on discover, uh, apparently because MPI exec is uh, uh, more the, the MPI standard had puts more restrictions on MPI exact, whereas MPI run is MPI run is more uh, platform uh, implementation uh, variable. But anyway, so this is the uh, uh, benchmarking run that that we did. It's a 3D ver application. It takes 12 million observations. Uh, I filters them in 9 million pass through QC. We did this with FV3, a resolution, not full operational resolution of C192. Uh, and uh, the, this, this uh, Jedi itself is not optimized. So this application, uh, when we benchmarked it on, on AWS, we found it that it took more than 90% of its time was on MPI communications. So this is a problem with Jedi that we need to optimize. But the purpose of this was to check the performance of the containers. So, uh, so it's not about the code. So the platforms we picked were the Discover system at NCCS, the S4 system at SSEC and Amazon. And the reason that we picked these systems is because this, this is where we have access to Singularity. Uh, and uh, AD, uh, on AWS, Kartik Raman and Kevin Jorensen um, helped out quite a bit. Uh, with this. So this is some of the hardware details, Discover is, so, so this is, and this was not a scaling study. Uh, so, so we didn't do, we didn't vary the number of MPI tasks. We, we used the same number of tasks uh, on each system. And so, uh, so it took a number of different nodes depending on, depending on the system is the number of nodes it took. Uh, but 31 nodes on Discover, uh, 24 nodes on, uh, on AWS, which has a uh, 36 cores per node, but this was the result. So, so e each of these, so the uh, the bluish plots are using native um, environment modules. The orange is using the Singularity container, and so this is AWS. Oh, I uh, and the uh, th so there's two partitions on S4. Uh, the, the the main partition uses the uh, uses these Skylake Intel processors, but they have Olnor architecture that uses Ivy Bridge. Uh, so we, we tried that out as well. Uh, and so uh, the, the bottom line here is that there's on AWS and Discover, so, so each of these lines is the average of 10 uh, runs. And the bottom line is on AWS and Discover, there is no overhead at all with using the container. So, so this is again, uh, using, using 24 nodes on uh, Amazon uh, and what was it, 31 nodes on Discover. Uh, uh, S4, there was a little uh, container overhead on the, main, um, on the main partition, but surprisingly, and we don't understand this, the best performance was obtained using the older hardware in the container significantly. So, and, and that's, and that, that's not a fluke. Like, so, so this, uh, this S4 Ivy inside the container was, was by far the fastest on, uh, on, um, S4, which was a bit surprising. Uh, so a, a full disclosure that that wasn't actually the same container running on discover as the ones running on Amazon and S4. Uh, so I, I mentioned that inside the container, you, you install the InfiniBand drivers, the OFEED, uh, and there's the generic brand of that or the Mellanox specific. And uh, to achieve, so, so the, the base container just uses the, uh, the generic one for portability reasons. But to achieve this performance on Discover, um, we had to use the Mellanox drivers in the container. So this is uh, the, the blue here, the blue and orange here are the uh, same as in the previous slide. The green here is with the, uh, uh, the generic OFID drivers. And it was about a 7% uh, overhead with, with those. 
Uh, just a quick um, comment here that on, on Discover, we had to build in a sandbox mode. So you had to um, convert the singularity image into a sandbox directory and run from that. Uh, I think it's because on Discover that they were, it, they, discalled, they installed singularity in an in a, uh, unprivileged mode. Uh, just quick comment on performance tuning on AWS uh, with, with various things using the FSX file system. The big thing actually here was uh, uh, dropping the caches that, that uh, there was memory fragmentation. So if you run a drop cache before you, before you actually submit the job, you shave uh, three or four, even four minutes off the time. So, so now, now the, now the, the current, um, uh, performance on AWS is more comparable to uh, Discover. It's slightly, still slightly slower, but um, just a quick summary. So, so Jedi, our first public release is this month. We have a number of containers um, that we uh, use for portability. The super containers can, um, can run with no overhead. It takes a little fiddling to get uh, native performance, but, uh, but it's, it's, uh, a, a useful mode to operate in. And just one last slide for, for this particular conference. Uh, I thought I'd mentioned uh, the porting to uh, heterogeneous architectures. I mentioned we build the containers with a, a container maker provided by NVIDIA. So they have building box blocks for the uh, HPC SDK NVIDIA stack, which has CUDA and OpenACC and all uh, optimized GPU libraries. Uh, and Singularity also has native GC. GPU support, but but we don't have. There's only a few um, components of Jedi that use OpenMP threading, and none currently used Open OpenACC yet. So Jedi itself isn't ready. But when it is, there should be nothing preventing us from um, from also uh, using containers to 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 port to heterogeneous systems. And I'll stop there. Thanks. Can people hear me or are you still there? Are you there, John? Yeah, I'm still here. So if you could read the uh, questions, so, yeah. Okay, did you ever consider using EC build or SPAC, easy build or SPAC? We, we have considered using SPAC. Um, one of the problems there is, uh, is on machines like Noah's Hera system be, uh, because of security uh, uh, reasons that yeah, they don't have open internet ports. So uh, so there was some uh, some difficulty there. Uh, my my colleague um, Ryan Honeyacre was trying to trying to implement that on uh, on Harrow and was fi finding it, it was it was having problems pulling stuff um, from. Uh, but we we can consider using uh, SPAC. Uh, we we haven't we haven't used it so far. We we've been. Uh, the, the, our, our build system lets us customize things as much as we want so we know exactly what's in it. But, um, but SPAC is a possibility and we have considered uh, going to it. So good, next, next one, can you comment on parallelism within Jedi? Uh, GPU and CPU, not, not really yet. So, so it's, it's just CPU and MPI right now. And, and with our first release, we're, we're really focusing on the scientific content of it and not, and it hasn't been highly optimized so, or, or ported to, to different architectures. So um, there's virtually no GPU support in it now and minimal um, threading. So that, that's something that we will, we will do with future versions. And let's see, this is, is the container used to run Docker. And, uh, yeah, I haven't heard of that in particular. My, my impression was with Docker is you, you, you can get it to work on HPC. It, it can work on things like AWS where you have, uh, where, where sort of um, elevating the, the user to um, admin status is not as much of a uh, uh, issue. Uh, but in order to avoid that, because Docker runs with a root daemon, so you have to isolate the networks into virtual networks, uh, and that that can work. But <coughs> uh, and, and and yeah, some some 
Um, there are some examples of using that. I, I think they did it in at Sandia. Um, but um, but but you really need administrator access to 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 do something like that. I I, I think it's but but I, I know I'd be interested to see to hear if uh, uh, other examples of using Docker on HPC systems. I, there there aren't there aren't many of them, and those that I know of are are basically the um, system administrators for the site that can do a, do what they want. <laughs> 